morning from Bali. What just happened? <laughs> what is going on? Oh my gosh. Am I sideways? Now, oh, just when you think Mercury retrograde is over, am I sideways? I was right side up when I started this video. Oh my goodness. And if it's that close up on my face, it's like, whoa, now you guys can really see how tired I look. I gotta go to my page and see what's happening here. I'm right side up. Oh my god. I have to Her watch this. Over. I'm totally Am yeah. I sideways? I was right side up when I started this video. It just made me sideways on my phone, which is so funny. Oh my god. Okay. Well, I'm gonna have to read like this to read your comments. I guess I'll just open the live stream on my computer <laughs> so I can see your comments. Oh my goodness. Well, this is what we get, right? So, hi, hi, hi everyone. Say hi as you're hopping on. It's a little bit of weird and crazy chaos happening in the, in the, on the interwebs this morning. So hopefully, <laughs> I wish I could show you guys what it looks like. It's like giant me sideways. Um, well. This is, I literally just left a note in my Telegram channel about how, even though Mercury's direct, we're still, like the post shadow period is gonna be really strong. So obviously that's the case right now as I am sideways on my, and it looks like quite blurry, huh? Is the signal blurry? Hello, hello, Kimberly. Yeah, I don't know, it's crazy, we'll see what happens. Is, for you guys, when I'm watching on my computer, but that could be Bali internet, is my, uh, is the video blurry or is it normal? It's all clear, okay. <laughs> well, there you have it. If you're watching from the Element Factor, come join on my main Facebook page so you can join the hilarious conversation that's ensuing in the comments section. Um, so it's Monday morning and I've recently shifted my life around, my calendar around. Um, I used to have all of my staff meetings on Mondays and Monday was a work day and Monday now is a day off. Um, and for me, day off, like, I don't actually ever really take days off, but um, it's a rest and rejuvenation day. And so hopefully that also means that like, I'm gonna have a space to like be doing more public live streams because I haven't been doing very many lately. I've just been like really, my calendar has been quite full. So we've been doing some rearranging of the calendar. And so I'm excited to be like, just able to like wake up. I'm, I literally slept till like eight o'clock this morning, which was lovely. You can see I'm a little bit tired. My eyes are a little puffy. Um, so I'm having my coffee. I'm hopping on this live stream with you guys and my masseuse is coming in 30 minutes, um, who is an actual, who's a healer, masseuse, but also a healer. Um, she's really been helping me with some of my structural back issues that I've been having. So she's coming um, and then she's gonna see Sean and help him with his neck from the surf accident. Um, and then we're actually going to spend which this is hilarious, this isn't actually rest and rejuvenation, we're actually going to spend another afternoon with Taryn and Max and Sarah. We are um, planning some really, really amazing, epic things for the Healy community and just the world in general. Um, and so we've had like a little two day mastermind where we've been spending like six to eight hours together just planning like our next steps and all the amazingness that we're getting ready to unleash on the world. So at two o'clock, we're heading over to Taryn and Sarah and Max's house in Seisei. Um, I'm gonna spend another afternoon masterminding 
all of this epic stuff that we're bringing to the world. Um, and so I wanted to hop on and just do a live stream. Um, I've really been thinking about, I went back to journaling again this morning, which I've really fallen off my journaling practice and I journaled this morning and it was so amazing. And I was journaling about, you know, creating my heaven on earth experience right now during this time of like global unrest and, and unsettledness. Um, Bali is trying to let tourists back in and tourism back in. And so as a result of that, there are some changes happening at immigration and we were in the process of uh, processing our year long residency permit here in Bali when the when COVID hit and so we didn't actually get our um we didn't get that process and so we've been on this emergency stay visa and over the weekend they came out with immigration came out and said okay like you know basically emergency stays are over and you're gonna have 30 days to leave the country and it was like all this crazy hectic information coming and you know, it's it's interesting because I'm like, oh, the old me would have just been completely freaked out and like, oh my God, like, you know, it was a lot of misinformation coming out as it does in Bali. It's like so typical. This letter was leaked from immigration. It wasn't an official statement. And so it just gets everyone like in this uproar about what's going on without clear communication. And, you know, just the series of events over the last week in my life have been so interesting. Sean and I decided we wanted to get puppies for the boys for Jack's birthday in a couple of weeks. And so then we, and then two days later, these puppies show up, um, these little street dogs that didn't have a home and we took them in. And so then we messaged our, the, the woman that owns the villa that we're staying in. And she was like, nope, no dogs. And we were like, what? Like everyone has dogs in Bali, it's so crazy. And so I was like, ah, oh, well obviously it's time for us to move. So then we start, we've been looking at villas. We've been looking at villas for a year, but we had actually found one that we really, really liked. And I was like, okay, it's just time to pull the trigger on that villa. We're gonna move. And so then we're like, we go into the negotiating process on the villa and then all of a sudden this immigration thing happens. And it's just like, you know, I just kind of laughed this morning because I was like, wow, you know, this is absolutely the difference in my life um, now versus a few years ago like i was i'm su i was such a planner such a person that like needed safety stability security needed to know exactly what was happening at all times in order to feel safe stable and secure um and it's just like today i'm just like ah yeah well obviously like we need to send passports over to immigration we need to figure out this immigration thing and you know we need to get the new villa and all of this basically has to happen in two weeks. And it's like, I don't have a home. I don't have a visa. I don't have, I have no safety, stability and security. And I'm, I literally am just like, I was journaling this morning and I'm like, ah, oh, everything's gonna work out. You know, everything's always working out in my favor. And it's like, I'm not just saying that. I actually believe it. I actually believe that every single thing that's showing up right now for me, every single thing that's happening in my life right now is happening in my highest and best good because there's just no other option but that happening. But it feels really good to actually be on board with that and believe it instead of just be saying it. And, you know, so we were talking with Taryn and Max and Sarah who are in a similar situation yesterday and we were looking at like, okay, well, which countries are, because worst case scenario, we have to leave Bali for a month, right? And then come back in after they open up to tourists. And so we're like, well, who's, and, but then there's this whole issue right now of like, if you go to another country, you have to quarantine for 14 days and it's like in a hotel room. And I'm like, you guys have seen Jack, like there's no freaking way I can quarantine Jack into a hotel room for 14 days. We would all lose our minds. I think everyone would be dead at the end of the two weeks. And so we were researching yesterday, like where we can go that are, that's basically ignoring this 14 day quarantine thing. And is not like, you know, being super strict with, with COVID. And it's like, the options were like Egypt, um, Croatia, the Maldives and Turkey. And I think one other, and I can't remember, but we were just laughing yesterday because we were just like, oh, look, I mean, our lives are so horrible. We're going to have to leave Bali for a month and go to Croatia for a month. 
you know, and it's just, it's such a different reality. And I just wanted to get on and talk about this and share this because I really believe that this is all, it's all a choice. It, we have a choice in each moment of every day to decide to live our heaven on earth experience. And it is in the decision that the universe can step up and fully support us. And so, you know, if I had entered into a space and a place of lack and scarcity and worry and fear and, oh my gosh, where are we going to live? And, oh my gosh, what are we going to do with these dogs? And, oh my gosh, what are we going to, you know, what about this visa? Then I would ag absolutely be perpetuating and calling in all of those things that I don't desire happening in my life. And it's like, I'm just not available for that. What I am available for is everything working out and conspiring in my favor, continuing to live my absolute best life in on this beautiful island in this amazing timeline that that I that I'm existing in and that absolutely everything is always working out in my favor. Everything, like the universe is constantly conspiring in my favor. There's no other option but for that to be true. And you know, and this is not like, I'm not talking about like spiritual bypassing away the realities of what's happening in the world. I'm very aware of what's happening in the world. And I'm very aware that many people are not living in the timeline that I'm living in. Um, and I have compassion for those that are, that are not living this reality that I'm living. Um, and at the same time, if you're one of those people, I, I want to say to you that making a decision right now in this moment as you're watching this live stream to begin to shift that, to begin to shift out of that reality that you're not enjoying existing in. It's making the decisions each moment to shift your paradigm that actually shifts your paradigm. Um, so for me, right now in this moment, I, I'm just not available for being worried or concerned about any of this stuff. Does that mean I'm gonna like put my set head in the sand and ignore it? No, of course not. I have to show up. I have to put my full energetic backing behind my desired outcome. So I was journaling today and I was like, ah, you know, I don't often call on my guides, guardians, spirits, ancestors to come in and intervene in my life and help in my life because I feel like most of the time I've got it. Me, like just my energetic availability and how I show up and back myself I would say 90% of the time creates this reality, creates this existence that I live in. And um, I, you know, but today I was just like, wow, there's a lot. You know, I was aware as I was writing. Um, yeah, amazing, Tatiana. I'm sorry, I have to read your comment sideways because something weird's happening with my phone. So I'm like, looking like a dog right now reading your comment um but this morning as I was writing out like ah and this is what I'm desiring to call in here and I'm desiring this to show up with ease and and grace and flow and ah and like this is how I'm you know this is how I'm and I literally was writing this is how I'm bending this reality I'm bending this reality in my favor in this way um but after I wrote it all down I looked at it and I was like whoa this is actually a lot like this is a lot and you know, I can fully energetically back that all of those things were happening, but I just thought, mm, this is like a really good time for me actually to call on my guides, guardians, spirits, ancestors to step in and intervene on my behalf and make sure that all of this happens with grace and ease. And so I just, you know, did a little journaling, probably five minutes of journaling on calling in my spiritual support and my spiritual team to come in during this time and to intervene and to make sure that everything that happens is in the highest and best interest of my family and that it happens with grace and ease and you know that that I am giving permission for them to intervene at this time and just make all of this happen quickly and it felt felt really good like when I was done journaling I was just like oh yeah awesome like you know good that's that's in the hands of you know my spiritual team now does that mean that I do nothing no, it does not mean that I do nothing, right? It means that I still I still have to show up. I still have to show up and action the things that I desire to have an outcome on, right? So I had to get the passports together today and have my house manager go to the immigration agent, you know, to the immigration agent 
and give her the list of questions that I need clarity on and then we're gonna have to make a decision about how we're gonna handle our our residence permit so I don't just sit here and hope that the universe takes care of me but I do fully energetically back that the universe will take care of me I can call in my you know spirits guides guardians ancestors to step in and help and intervene and then I am always ready and willing to do my part and I'm always taking inspired action from the divine guidance that I'm receiving. And that's how I create this heaven on earth experience. It's not through non-action. Um, and Paige just said something about celestial beings. Yeah, so, well, Paige, my spirits, ancestors, guides, guardians are celestial beings, so, but however you like to say it. Um, I certainly project grace and ease. Oh, thank you. Well, you know, and it wasn't always like this, you know, and it does require practice. It does require discipline. It does require you continuing to show up in the choice every day. Like, are you choosing to build your heaven on earth experience? Like, that's the question you have to ask yourself. Or are you just stuck in a place of believing that you're powerless and that you don't have any control over your day to day reality? Um, and so as a result, you're not actioning anything. You're not actioning the shift into that new paradigm. So I think that, you know, this is really just the place that I think a lot of people, um, you know, they want to believe that the universe always has their back, but they're not willing to action it each moment of every day. And for me, I'm willing to action it. I'm willing to fully show up in my belief, in my intention, and in my physical actions that are continually keeping me rooted in my heaven on earth reality, but before I was rooted in it, were, were edging me, inching me closer and closer and closer through each thought, through each feeling, through each action to that heaven on earth reality. And here's the other thing I guess I'll say. You can't live your heaven on earth, earth reality if you don't know what it is. So you've got to first get clear. Like if you're just unhappy living in your current reality, like you can't shift out of that. You've got to decide where is it that I'm desiring to shift? What is it that I'm desiring to shift to? What, you know, everyone's heaven on earth reality isn't living on ba living in Bali by the beach. Like that's not for everyone. Some people want to live in mountain towns. Some people, you know, want to be skiing all the time. It just really like, it depends on you and you've really got to get clear on what that reality is for you and then decide that there's no other option but you getting to live that reality. Soul path, Jeremiah writes, soul path. I need to get back to you today, Jeremiah, I will. Soul path takes work and requires us to walk through made up fears as they aren't real when we show gratitude for the moment. Yeah, I, I actually was like, where was I talking about gratitude? in one of my program calls over the weekend. Um, oh, in my alchemical wealth group, actually, um, I was talking about um, gratitude and how powerful gratitude is. And, you know, and again, it's just, it's a component, right? Like you can't just do gratitude lists every day and expect that your life is gonna change because it's not, you have to action the gratitude, you have to action the intention, you have to action the belief, you have to request the divine guidance and then action that guidance. But gratitude is, I think, the thing that, you know, often when we're doing all the other things, we will forget about it because it was probably one of the first things that we learned, you know, on this spiritual journey. And, you know, for me, it's so powerful to go back to gratitude. We were sitting in this cafe yesterday, we had this mastermind session and we broke in the afternoon, decided to go get a coffee and we were sitting in this gorgeous cafe in Seise and I was just looking like we were, you know, outdoor cafe and I'm looking around and there's so many beautiful flowers in bloom in Bali right now and the colors are just like incredible and I was talking with Taryn and I'm just like, it's just, so beautiful like everything is so beautiful in Bali and I'm like look at the color of that flower like this bright pink fuchsia flower and then this other tree was blooming with these beautiful yellow flowers and I was just like it never gets old like and I don't know if it's just because I live in a place of deeper gratitude in for life in general but you know it's like every time I drive through a Bali rice field which is damn near every day I'm just awestruck at the beauty of 
my surroundings and and that I, I so as a result of that I live in a constant state of gratitude and that constant state of gratitude is what perpetuates me being able to continue to live in my heaven on earth experience it's also how I know I'm in my heaven on earth experience because I'm just awestruck all the time at the beauty that surrounds me and I you know I spend so much of my day in gratitude for this lifetime right and so I just think that and but I had decided right I had decided Bali was where I wanted to design my heaven on earth experience I knew I wanted to be near a beach like I was called here and so as a result I am I still there now I'm getting weird alerts on my phone as a result when I got here I knew I was here right like I knew I was here I knew I had landed in my heaven on earth so got to decide got to get clear on what it is and then begin taking daily actions in the moments literally in the moments and how you do that is deciding what your state is going to be when you come up against the hard things when you come up against the things that you know aren't running as smoothly as you would like them to how do you choose to react in that moment do you choose to have gratitude for whatever the lesson is that you're being brought um, or do you just get spun out and go into a place of lack and scarcity because you feel like your safety stability and security is being upset and you know I think that this is very much the state of the world right now is that everyone's safety stability and security is is unsettled and so we're very much in this place of um, you know collective lack and scarcity and so it does require a little bit of work a lot of work in some cases to continue to stay in a positive mindset and in you know moving towards a better timeline and moving towards the new paradigm so um, I'm super excited because I have this master class coming up this week, um, the FIRE master class, and I'm doing it with my dear friend and business partner, Michelle Patrick, and she's just epic and amazing. If you don't already know her or follow her, make sure that you go and follow her. She is a physician of Chinese medicine. She is a um, practitioner of five element theory as well as uh, TCM, traditional Chinese medicine. Um, she's a naturopath, she is a nutritionist, <laughs> she has a million degrees and is so, so incredibly knowledgeable um, in five element theory. And, you know, for me, it's like this has been such a big piece in me being able to be settled in whatever situation of chaos is happening around me. It has really been my deep dive over the last year into five element theory and into, um, this exploration of who I am as an elemental being. And we all have all of the elements inside of us. The elements are in everything. Everything is elemental. Nothing, un so this is this Ling Shu quote that I love so much. Nothing on earth or within the universe is unrelated to the five elements and man is no exception. So literally we have all of the elements inside of us. The seasons are also elemental. So we have now entered into fire season and you know, why I think that's so important right now is that literally our global climate, we're in fire season. So we should be really in that place of flames being ignited and really working on cultivation of our own joy. But because of what's happening globally right now, the global climate is diminishing our internal flames. And that's making it really, really difficult for us to ignite our individualism because we're literally being like pushed into the ashes by the global climate. And so, but we have control over that. Like ultimately we have control, right? And nobody can be held responsible for the cultivation of our personal joy except us. So fire season is all about know, it's called, it's like know thyself is the theme of fire season. And it's, you know, it's, it is that, spark and that flame that puts us on our path towards purpose um it is absolutely ignited during during fire season like this season is all about pure potentiality um and and stepping into and harnessing pure potentiality but when we have a global imbalance in the fire element 
like we do right now because of what's happening in the world with coronavirus, we've got a global fire imbalance happening. And so as a result, our collective is imbalanced in their fire element and we can't fully embrace that element. We can't, we can't fully embrace it. We just can't because it's, it, when so much of the collective is effect, affected in a negative way, like it ripples, right? And it, so it's gonna ripple to us. So with this masterclass, one of the things that we really wanna do is help you um, identify what that fire imbalance looks like in your life, okay? And um, so what we will be doing is tapping into the fire element, your internal fire element. Um, we will teach you how to utilize and tonify that element, um, which in turn just creates a really, really strong foundation for mental, physical, and emotional well-being and health. Um, so we'll give you insight between the fire element and the season. Um, and then we'll, we'll help you learn to identify like when that element is out of balance, like what are the smoke signals that, that come off when that element is out of balance, both physical and emotional, right? Because you can, when you have a fire imbalance, both of that, you're tapping into both of that. Um, and then how to nourish your fire element. Um, and then we'll teach you about the internal organs that are associated with the fire element, which is the heart, the pericardium, the small intestine, and the triple burner. Um, and we just really want to give you a whole wealth of knowledge to walk away and know how to nourish your internal fire element um, through nutrition and naturopathy. So uh, we also will be providing a full cleansing um, a full detox and cleanse so that you can cleanse your physical body um, to enhance that elemental balance. Um, and then we will be doing our new emotional clearing modality, elemental emotional resonance clearing. We'll be clearing the four elements of um, the fire element, four organs of the fire element, as well as um, clearing two of the five primary questions associated with the fire element. So this is gonna be a deep dive and there's gonna be a lot of information. Uh, delivered in this masterclass and I'm so I'm really excited about it um, and for those of you that are Healy people we will be using the Healy to energetically clear and up level the, the fire organs during the masterclass and then I'll also be giving you a walk away protocol um, of programs to run to enhance that experience and then to like supercharge your detoxification process once you start the cleanse. So it's $111, it's happening on Thursday. I'm like over the moon excited about this. I love working with Michelle. Um, those of you that have done any of our free programs know that you know she's just a really, really incredible human being. And here, I'll drop you guys the link. There's the link for the Fire Masterclass. Um, but there's always just so much wisdom and knowledge that comes out and we work really well together and um, we're actually launching a huge program right now called Becoming Immortal that's a six month program. We just finished a um, six weeks, a six week program um, that was incredible called Inner Alchemy and we're moving into now a bigger program but we are going to be doing these master classes seasonally so each time a new element comes um, into existence, um, or not into existence, but each time we tran we transfer into the new element, we will be doing one of these master classes. So the question was really good about, is it, um, only fire season in the Northern hemisphere, um, or the seasons global global. So it's a really, really good question, right? Because the, um, Northern hemisphere and the Southern hemisphere are on different, um, they're on different seasons, right? So fire traditionally is a summer um, seasonal element. Um, and so I asked Michelle this question when we were preparing the fire masterclass. I was like, well, is it just um, fire season in the Northern hemisphere or is it also in the Southern hemisphere? Um, and so, you know, obviously fire is associated with summer. So in the Northern hemisphere, it is absolutely fire season. Um, but this masterclass is really, really relevant for all people right now because of the global climate and the global imbalance in fire. 
Um, and so the cleanse and the detoxification process, whether you're in the Northern Hemisphere or the Southern Hemisphere, is gonna be hugely beneficial in you being able to know thyself and cultivate joy. So, um, and eventually we may do two master classes, um, but we're starting with this fire one. So regardless of where you are in the world, like this, it's just gonna be next level information and you know, for me, every time I step into, I'm a metal constitutional factor, and every time I step into elemental cleansing um, or doing clearing work within the elements, I have such a huge shift in all my other um, bodies because when one element is out of balance, it creates strain on the other elements. So coming in and just balancing fire is gonna be tremendous no matter what your constitutional factor element is or what element you're existing in in whatever part of the world you live in. So hopefully that answered that question. Um, it will be a two hour masterclass and it's happening on July 16th at 8 p.m. Bali time, which is 1 p.m. London, 8 a.m. Eastern and 5 a.m. Pacific. Um, and then, you know, if 5 a.m. is too early for you to get up, though I really recommend that you come and join live because it will be incredible. Um, you can definitely watch the replay. There's always replays available for the masterclass. So you've got the link there for the masterclass. I would love, love, love to have you join us. Um, it's going to be next level and incredible. I'm really excited for it. Um, yeah, so I think that's it. Like, I just kind of wanted to come on and share that um, message of like really being intentional in what you're creating. Um, you're more powerful than you know. And I just think it's really, really important that you, um, you own your power, you know, <laughs> you begin to cultivate your power. And really, I do believe that like part of the reason why this is so easy for me and why I've shifted to this place of like complete certainty is that, you know, for me, self mastery is a thing. And, um, I am obsessed with knowing, know thyself, knowing thyself, like knowing myself, right? I'm obsessed with it. And I just, um, I, the, the more I continue to take this internal journey and get to know and understand myself, the more powerful I feel, the more able I am to stay present, um, no matter what's happening around me. And the easier it is for me to navigate challenges or lessons that, that are presented to me. Um, and to be able to always transmute those lessons and challenges into opportunity. And that has a lot to do with the study of five element theory and understanding my internal elements um, and, and, and constantly being in a process of inner alchemy and recognizing and realizing that my external environment is always a direct um, reflection of my internal environment. So I encourage you to start taking these journeys with us. If you haven't joined our free group, The Element Factor, by the way, we have a free group, Michelle and I. Um, let me give you a link to that because you can join that free group. And we did a five day or a six day, I think it was a six day free live stream event in that group. Um, and there's, a, there's heaps of elemental content in there. Um, this, is, this fire class is gonna be a deep, deep dive of the fire content that we covered in the group. Um, but it's also a great way to prepare for the fire masterclass is to go in and watch the fire content from um, the element factor. But the element factor is a free Facebook group that Michelle and I host. So definitely like join that. There's the link there for that for you guys as well. Um, yeah, so I think that's it. Have an amazing rest of your day, morning, evening, wherever you are in the world as you are watching this live stream or you're watching the replay. And remember, it is your divine birthright to be wealthy in all areas of your life. And you are so worthy and you are so deserving. Um, so now it's time to start cultivating our joy um, by balancing our fire element. I hope to see all of you on Thursday in the masterclass. Mwah.